Hey everybody, excuse me a second. Welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. This video is intended for students taking my Biology 2401 or AMP1 class. And this is gonna be the nervous system. And this is gonna be uh, video number two. It's actually the third in the series, but what I'm doing is a video of a drawing. And then I do a video of me going over the model. I like to draw everything so you see it unfold. I think it helps you learn the anatomy a little better. And then we apply it to the model. So um, we're going to be going over the models of the brain. We've got quite a bit of structures to go over, quite a few. And we're going to be starting on page 32 and flipping between page 32 and 33 on your laboratory guide or what I call the list of things to know. So follow along with me, please. These are impromptu one-take videos using my cell phone. I know it's very unprofessionally done, but it's the best we can do in this short period of time that we have to work. So I'm going to draw out the brain. Our brain, as it evolves, has three major reason, regions. Um, the very front of the brain, the forebrain, is referred to as the prosencephalon, pro meaning before. Uh, the midbrain is called the mesencephalon, meso means middle. And then there's the rhombencephalon, rhombus means the back or behind, it's the hindbrain. Eventually, those evolve into many other structures. When we study the brain, we're going to talk about some other regions. And there's, um, you know, essentially, you know, four, five, six separate regions, depending on which stage of development or which ones we point out. We're going to see four of the major brain regions right now in this drawing. When we look at a model of the brain, what we see when we stare at the model is we see that the surface of the brain has a bunch of bumps all over the surface of it. I refer to them as bumps. Some people call them folds. But these things go all the way around and form this large structure. All of this structure that I've outlined here is referred to as the cerebrum. The cerebrum is probably the most, or it is the most advanced part of our brain where our highest level of thinking occurs. And all of this would be called the cerebrum. Tucked underneath, or inside the cerebrum, there's a little rounded belly-like structure that sticks out, and then a stem that comes down. If we go down too far, that actually turns into the spinal cord. Now, we're not going to see the spinal cord on this particular video, but if we're inside the skull, then this structure is referred to as the pons, and this structure down here is referred to as the medulla or the medulla oblongata. And then if our, let's say our foramen magnum were there, the pons and medulla are continuous with the spinal cord. As long as we're inside the skull, this is medulla. Once we're outside the skull, it becomes the spinal cord. Actually attached to the pons of the midbrain is this structure that usually appears kind of brownish on our models that's sitting back here underneath the cere cerebrum, and this structure is called the cerebellum. Okay? So now, we have this four major structures, cerebrum and cerebellum, pons and medulla. And by the way, the pons and the medulla, and another structure very often called the midbrain, sometimes are referred to as the brain stem. Because the brain stem, it's like a little stem with all of this sitting on top. Now, when we look at the cerebrum itself, the cerebrum is divided into two halves, and they're kind of rounded. So if I could um, reach over here and grab one of these models, since we're looking at it this way, this would be the structures that we're talking about. Cerebrum, the cerebellum, and then underneath here would be our pons and medulla, the brain stem. I'm going to go over this model kind of up close. You can see all the bumps on the surface of the brain. I'm going to go over those in a moment. Now let me grab a different model. I really like this model, and we're going to use it a lot for the beginning here. We call this our puzzle brain because it comes apart in many pieces like a 3D puzzle. And you can see how it's been taken apart so many times it's hard to hold together. But all of this would be your cerebrum, the pons, I'm sorry, cerebellum, pons and medulla tucked underneath here. The reason I like to use this model is because our two halves of our cerebrum, each round half of the cerebrum is called a hemisphere. Hemi meaning half and sphere meaning round thing. You can grab the two cerebral hemispheres of a human brain and start to pull them apart. And there is an opening here or a gap, a groove right down the middle but it does bottom out. They are, the, the cerebrum is connected um, in here through some other structures. Okay? So you can't run the paper all the way through. It only goes about halfway down or about a third of the way down. 
That groove that separates the cerebrum into two hemispheres is referred to as the longitudinal fissure because it runs the length of the brain. I can't see the longitudinal fissure here, but it's an important structure, okay, or a landmark anyway. Let me set this model down. Now, when we do look at the surface of the brain, we notice that the, the surface of the brain, the cerebrum itself, has all these bumps that stick out. I refer to them as bumps. Some people say they're folds that stick out of the brain. But if I were to ask someone to gyrate their hips, gyrate means you stick out. So every bump that sticks off the surface of the brain is called a gyrus. And there are many gyri on the surface of the cerebrum. So, and to make this plural, we take the U.S. off and put an I there and pronounce it gyri. Now, in between two gyri, there are grooves that run around and snake around on the surface of the brain, kind of like a hill with a valley on either side. Those grooves, each groove on the surface of the brain is called a sulcus. A sulcus is a low spot, and we'll make this plural by taking the U.S. off and putting an I on there and say sulci. So the entire cerebrum is a series of gyri and sulci interrupting each other. Now... If we go through the longitudinal fissure, roughly about halfway back on the brain, a little bit more than halfway, there's one specific sulcus, uh, I'll do it right about here, that snakes down, but it actually goes from the longitudinal fissure, uninterrupted, all the way down to this fold where the brain folds over on itself. That particular sulcus is, an, is a very important anatomical landmark. So if I ask you for that specific groove, that one is called the central sulcus. Pardon my back. Okay. So the central sulcus is a major landmark for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it separates two very important gyri. And I'm going to color code them the way this one brain model is color coded. Um, the one just before the central sulcus, I'm going to make it red. It comes most of the way down here. That one is called the pre-central gyrus because it's just before the central sulcus. It's one specific bump right before the central sulcus. And the pre-central gyrus is important because that's what we call the primary motor cortex. We've actually mapped out the entire human body, the skeletal muscles from your feet to your legs to your shoulder, your arms, your face all the way mapped out perfectly here and every thought to initiate movement in some part of your body begins along the precentral gyrus also our brain is somewhat cross-wired the right half of my brain monitors and controls the left half of my body and vice versa the left half of my brain the left hemisphere is monitoring and controlling the right half of my body so this would be uh, monitoring actually controlling the skeletal movement on the right side of my body since we're looking at the left side of the brain. This is kind of important to note if a patient has a stroke and they have partial paralysis on the right side, you know the stroke must have affected the precentral gyrus usually uh, on the left side of the brain. Now the, the gyrus just be behind the central sulcus, I'm going to color it blue just like our model, one of our models does. That one's called the post central gyrus. The postcentral gyrus is also a major landmark because that's the primary sensory cortex. The cortex is the covering of the brain. I'll show you in a moment. And that postcentral gyrus is um, where the, all the sensations from the surface of our body end up synapsing up here and we process it there. So if you damage this, you would have numbness and an ability to feel a certain part of your body. If you damage the precentral gyrus, you would lose movement to a certain part of the body. Another reason the central sulcus is important is because it is the division between two lobes. The surface of the cerebrum shows us four of the lobes of the brain. And the four lobes that we're going to see here are named for the bones that cover them. Frontal bone, parietal bone, occipital bone, and temporal bone. So all of the area from the central sulcus forward is called the frontal lobe. The central sulcus is the border between the frontal lobe and what we call the parietal lobe. Now, it's a little bit hard to see, and let me pick up this model. Pardon me for reaching in front of you again, but I'll show you these details in a moment. But one of the things I want to show you is on the back of the model here, there's sort of a, 
uh, almost a triangular or little uh, dome-shaped area right above the cerebellum that is called the occipital lobe. That occipital lobe would roughly be right in this area here. called the occipital lobe. Now, between the central sulcus and the occipital lobe, this is all the parietal lobe. I'm going to put a big giant P here for parietal. You can follow along on your list and see this. And then as our brain is developing, it actually starts off like this, almost as a straight line, and then it folds over on itself. And this little piece can be pulled down because there's a groove here. And this piece would be the temporal lobe of the brain. So I can see four lobes here, frontal, parietal, separated by the central sulcus. Right above the cerebellum is a sort of dome-shaped area called the occipital lobe, and then there's the temporal lobe. Now, I want to cover one more thing before I get to the model. Our cerebellum is also divided into two hemispheres, and the grooves or lines on the surface of the cerebellum sort of separate out these structures. If I stuck my fingers together like this, you'd be seeing my fingers with some little grooves between them. But you can actually fan these apart. And each one of these little lines or these pieces that stick out are referred to as folia, like folds or leaves. So, now that's a lot of stuff to see in this drawing. We have the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla. We have the gyri and the sulci. And then one particular sulcus that separates the frontal and parietal lobes is called the central sulcus because it's about midway back. It's a little bit more than midway back on the models. The specific bump or fold in front of it is called the precentral gyrus, and the one behind it is called the postcentral gyrus. And then we can see four lobes here. We have the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. And then the folds or lines in the surface of the cerebellum are called folia. So I hope you learned something from that. I'm going to stop the video and get set up to do the models so that I can show you all of these structures on the models. Hope you learned something. Hope you had as much fun as I did. Thanks for watching.